Mm-hmm. I'm Hillary. And I'm Clinton. And welcome to Black Atlantic. We're a podcast, website, and media channel with the goal of bringing Black Canadian East Coast voices to the world. You can expect to hear from us every week with guests or open discussion, exploring topics and perspectives from all over Atlantic Canada. Be sure to visit blackatlantic.ca. And search for Black Atlantic on all socials. How are you this week? I'm good. I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. I mean, I'm in super, I'm in super 3D, not 3D, 2D, I guess, camera. So anyone who's not watching, if you watch, I am the clearest I have ever been and will ever be on camera. Uh, I broke out the D5600. I learned how to use it because um, we're going to do a video, a per- in-person version of my work podcast next week while I am in Ottawa for Blues Fest. And so, um, no offense, it motivated me harder to learn how to figure this out. And now we get to benefit too. Not yeah, just me. You're Pardon building me. a greenhouse. Oh, yeah. I'm building a greenhouse. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got my my black farm boy ish. I got my tractor working. You got you got to learn new stuff when you move from the city to the country. So I learned how to fix a tractor belt this week, which was pretty interesting. So now I can cut all this grass again um i was in two separate news articles this week one for good reasons and one for not so good reasons uh the halifax examiner matthew byard had me on for um as part of his interview of the tribe network out of halifax and then the other thing was we were interviewed by cbc again yesterday for um, the daniel bard trial which is the man from new brunswick who frauded out like 60 plus people out of hundreds of thousands probably millions of dollars is being charged by the crown right now for 19 different uh criminal charges um so yeah we were interviewed about that as well and if you want to send those links to us we can share them on (laughs) blackmanic social media if you want yeah absolutely i'll I'll get i'll do that by the time you're listening to this you will be able to read them on our facebook or socials yeah good good sounds great so i will mention that we have a guest Yep. Um, because I, I always try to mention that there's someone there with us when people are watching us do our little intro spiel if they're watching. But we are joined YouTube. by... And we always forget to say, if you're watching this on YouTube, Hillary looking more clearer than she's ever looked, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, all right. Okay, let's go. Let's get it. And yeah, we need to introduce our guest first before we talk about all the other stuff. And then... Of course. Okay. This is how we correct ourselves by out loud criticizing ourselves on the podcast. We are joined this week by someone who's been a friend of mine for, I think, five, six years at this point. Um, I've known you for a very long time. Olam Koo, um, bartender, man of many jobs I learned more recently when I last visited. Um, <laughs> super cool guy. I, I worked with his sister in the past. Um, how are you today? I'm, I'm feeling fantastic. I'm, I'm refreshed. I took my, took my nap. I'm ready to go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, I will do a spoiler. So the reason that we're having you on is because I, you told me while I happened to be home on Clinton and I did our little house swap um, that you're starting a multicultural like market. And I definitely wanted to hear about that. But I also was not aware that back in the day you helped organize like the Black Lives Matter march that happened in Moncton when George Floyd passed away. Um, and I knew you then. So crazy to me how all of these worlds have come together. So I'm very excited to talk about that today. So I will start off by asking, though, for anyone who like doesn't isn't me and doesn't know you, if you could tell us more about yourself um, and maybe a little bit about what you were telling us before we started recording about your your dad and wh- where you're from and how you got to be in Moncton. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's go. Uh, so my uh, I'm, I'm I just turned 27 uh, just before Canada Day. It's uh, it's always happy great having your birthday. Right. Yeah, before, happy, uh, happy belated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks before uh, before a major holiday but uh that's the case with me every year and uh well, at least a major holiday here anyway uh as for my parents uh my mom is from lemonster massachusetts she's uh she's a white acadian uh she met my dad in nigeria uh while she was doing work with uh she was on missions trips with the church so my parents met uh with with the church in in Africa, and shortly afterwards, they shortly after they were married, um, they my mom came back to Canada to for for to deliver me in Canada, and then 
I stayed in Canada for about, uh, uh, I want to say maybe eight months to a year and then moved to Nigeria and then moved back from Nigeria when I was about four years old. And I've pretty much been in Atlantic Canada ever since. So grew up East Coast completely um, for, for the most part. So have, first question, I guess, is have you gone back and visited often? Um, I have a, one of my colleagues for my, one of the many jobs I have is Nigerian. And so like, I hear a lot about it and it's spoken about like quite highly and we've had guests in the past, Demi Lola, who's Nigerian as well, and who uh, lives in Moncton. So I'm curious if you've gone back a lot and like, from someone who's grown up in New Brunswick, if you, if you have gone, if you've noticed stark differences. So unfortunately, I haven't been back for, it's got to be coming on 23 years now, okay. which is <laughs> <laughs> crazy to think about. Um, but uh, no, it, it's definitely on the bucket list. Um, I've had I've had a couple of trips uh, planned out, but things have things have uh, crashed last minute. Uh, I think in 2018 I was going to go, and then I ended up breaking my heel, and uh, yeah, so that kind of put a damper on uh, my travel plans. But uh, it's definitely on the bucket list. Like we're I'm, I'm going to be making it back home at some point for sure. I feel you. I still haven't been to Senegal. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you both get back to the countries that your your fathers are from, because uh, that's really important. Um, I will say that my, you know, my mom is white and my dad is black from Jamaica, too. And the way they met was my mom was on a missionary trip in Jamaica. So (laughs) similar stories there. And uh, we do believe that my father's ancestry does go back to Nigeria based on like DNA tests that were done and everything. Um, But so you yeah, I, I think so. It didn't get us too, it, it was cool. But then when I started to learn more about Nigeria, that's when I learned there was like over 200 cultures and 200 languages. And so yeah, we still don't know. Uh, it. Still no there's clue there's a from. lot going on in Nigeria, man. There's, that's amazing. Uh, 180 people, or 180 million people together in one spot. Yeah, super busy city. Nice country i hear it's a pretty good gdp um there's lots of different things going on there i I do see a lot of culture exported from nigeria um i don't know if that's coincidence but i feel like there is a just like jamaicans i feel like there is a a significantly large nigerian population in in canada compared to some other african countries if not if not new brunswick itself I, i seem to come across a lot of nigerians um what was it like growing up in moncton for you then olem um yeah, so um, I mean, for I, I guess what I my experience was was fairly normal uh, in terms of being a, a BIPOC in in, the, in a white community. I, <laughs> I, so for when I was going define, to both, define normal. <laughs> <laughs> so when when I was uh, when I was going to middle school, I my family was the only black family at my at my school until I was probably in grade eight. So I would have been about like 12, 13 until I saw another black family. And I was like, I was like surprised too. I had, I had a big like, Afro too. And like, and I remember seeing this kid with the Afro that was like bigger than mine. And I was just like, what is this? There's no family here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, um, in, in terms of like, like n- normality, like I, I, I never felt like, super like I, I obviously like, I, I noticed you know from a very young age that my family was was quite different than all of my friends no one coming anywhere close to anything culturally wise or just just <clears throat> just a, a huge a huge gap in 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 culture differences for sure whereas you know most most of my friends growing up you know like their their parents met you know in the in the city or like you know not not far away like both the parents Canadian you know that kind of stuff whereas my none of my parents neither of my parents are Canadian <clears throat> yeah um but uh yeah no growing growing up like I, I as a kid I didn't I didn't get I didn't feel ostracized 
in any way. It wasn't until like I was about like getting into high school and when I when I started to notice like some some just just attitude changes and 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 just different different sort of things started popping up that I would that would pick up on. I'd be like, oh okay, like, yeah, people are following me in the store. Oh, Maybe maybe that stuff was happening when I was when I was younger and I just wasn't noticing it. But like as I as I started to age and get older, and I, I started to see certain things pop up here and there. You know, uh, going over to friends' houses for the first time, parents were always like, "Oh, you know, like, who's who's this guy?" <laughs> and then so, but uh, you know, I was I was had to had to have an extra layer of uh, of charm and and, and wit and to to win win people over yeah prove to my friends parents that i was uh, a decent guy whereas i feel like a lot of my friends didn't have to and weren't decent people so. that's that's a really like a insightful perspective that i haven't heard anyone in my two years of podcasting put it <clears throat> specifically like that like you know you just you feel the need to be extra nice overly courteous um you know careful with your words not, not like not being treated badly but yeah parents having a peaked interest in who you are maybe asking a few more questions than they'd ask their other friends not yeah. not like hateful racism but um surprise at seeing <laughs> you for the first time that's interesting um go ahead hillary I'm just going to say, it's a bit like code switching at work, which I yeah, feel like it's just, say. it transpires to different places in life where it's very much you have to, I, I want to say that it's like a, an interrogation that comes from ignorance and that it's not actual, like you're saying, it's not hateful or actually racist, but it is this weird sort of surprise. It does feel like, oh, there's a black person in my house and now I need to ask where they're from, where their parents are from, how their hair is the way that it is, and, like, all yeah, of the yeah. standard, typical questions. But, like, Chelsea doesn't get asked those questions, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> these are, these are like, slightly... These are, like, can be bothersome things, but it's, you know, especially when we speak to younger people, it's... Racism has changed a lot, right? It's People aren't getting hung <laughs> crosses on on lawns uh drag drug through the streets or some of the stories we've heard from older people just like mm-hmm. really hateful hateful word yeah. uh have, i don't know if you've ever been called the n-word here in moncton i know when i used to visit here before i moved here i was called that a lot um it's more like stereotypes or, or prejudice or, or or discrimination or just just being made aware that you're slightly different is what we hear a lot of people experiencing yeah would you, yeah, and, and, you is know, that kind of like, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, like, uh, I don't get me wrong. Like, I've, I've had, I've had some more like aggressive um, situations transpire. Uh, being being called the N word, not so much uh, here actually. Like, I, I lived in Halifax for a, a little bit, and I, I found that was more prevalent over there. But uh, you know, like, I, I was huh. in. Which, which was weird. I found it was really weird because I was, I was there for school. And again, I was, and again, like in, um, that, that was cool. Cause they had like the, uh, they had the, the, the black student council or, or uh, what was it? The, uh, they have a, they have a, a black student society. And uh, I found, I found myself hanging out there a lot. Um, but like when I was, when I was in res, I was, I was in the residency and you know, again, like, probably i want to say I, I wasn't the only black person but i was the only black person on my floor i remember i remember that i was like oh okay yeah no other no other brothers or sisters on this floor except me and uh yeah it, it and like i was i was a bit older too like I, I didn't go to school right away i think it was either i was either 19 or 20 when i when i went to dow and uh yeah i just remember being being treated just completely differently than anything I'd ever experienced from a younger white kids treated and, badly or treated like a celebrity <clears throat> um not so, uh, it, it, it was it was it was split there, there was there it was can go like, both ways right 
yeah man so there there yeah. were some people that were that were down and and some people that were just like blatantly not with it not with me and just based on on who i was at first glance and you know like but like, like seeing that like and experiencing that i really had to dig down into like you know why what why, why, why am i here you know like it's I'm not, I'm not here to be bothered by other people's opinions. Like I'm here because I'm pursuing an education for myself. And that's, you know, that's the goal at the end of this. And, you know, really, really having to, to dig deep into those, into those foundations and, 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 you know, that, that resolve is it just like, okay, you can push, you can push a lot of this crap out, which is which is primarily how I how I dealt with you know those those sort of dicey racist situations in in the school setting was just you know push it out push it put put it off to the side and and you know just hold your head up high be resilient and, and keep trucking along and it, it wasn't it wasn't until much later that I that I got into sort of activism and 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 you know just just having a conversation and saying like, you know, actually this is pretty fucked up and it's, it's, I'm not okay with it. I hear that. Um, do you want to talk about the activism first, Hillary, and then bounce circle back to the business? Sure. Well, I want, I did want to point out like super briefly that Camille Dundas, who uh, is the editor in chief of iBlacks.com, who we, you and I have spoken to before, um, she's going to be doing the diversity, equity, and inclusion like courses, I think, for staff and people at DAL. So hope on the horizon, although really, as we know, sometimes. We try to evoke change and it doesn't always happen, but fingers crossed. Um, and I did selfishly want to ask very briefly, Olam, if you had noticed a difference between, because um, I, you told me recently you went to both Moncton High and McNaughton and being from Trimble, I always perceive McNaughton to be so um, <clears throat> stuck up and pristine and like the school to go to because of sports. Everyone went there for sports yeah. and like all the, all the, in all honesty, all the cute guys went there and then arrivals were Moncton High and they always <laughs> had these stigmas. But I also could see like, uh, like racism or any differences in that going either way. Like at my high school, I was pushed into a wall and called a cotton picker and people thought Trumbull was like a nice school. So I'm curious if you ever experienced like anything different, like a big difference in one place versus the other, if it was like just always the same. Yeah, so first things first, I, I don't think there's anything, I don't think there is such thing as a nice school. Kids are mean. <laughs> Kids are mean. <laughs> you are right. You are right. Yeah. But uh, no, um, McNaughton, McNaughton for me was, was, was fairly straightforward. It was, I, I went to high school with a lot of the, with a lot of kids that I knew and I grew up with. Um, it, it, it was very, I, I want to say like, like TV kind of high school. Like if you were good at sports and smart, like you wouldn't have a problem. Like it was, it was, it was fine. And I, I played, played football, I had good grades. I got along with, with everyone. It was fine. Um, the reason I actually, I, I started, I, when I switched, um, and actually, you know, I will say, I will say something else too, about McDonald's. been done very, very academic focused. Uh, they're, uh, they're actually like when you, every, everyone knows them for the sports, but when you actually get into the school, they, they push the academics super fierce. Like they're, they're very proud of, of what they have achieved academically in their, in their, as history as a as a educational institution but uh so switching over to, to Moncton High uh immediately I was socially I was I felt a lot better off I was I was one of many black students uh whereas at McNaughton I was like one of like two or three there's there there's uh Nindambi was like a Two years older than me and then I think that was I think that was it until I until I got into grade 10 and then like there was a new like grade nine that was that was black so there was really only like a handful and uh going go, switching over to Martin High that that was completely changed uh lots of lots of black kids um 
socially, the Mountain High was a lot was a lot more um, fun and agreeable. Like I found McNaughton to be extremely clicky, and and, and just like it, for someone like me who likes to be in multiple circles, uh, especially when I was younger, like just like I was just a big social butterfly, and I. Uh, Having having a lot of friends in different groups, I found that to be uh, not everybody liked that at McNaughton. And then when I went, when I switched schools to Mountain High, no one gave, no one, no one cared. Everyone just hung out with everybody, and it was it was fine. Uh, but uh, academically, I will say that my grades started to slip a little bit. I did notice a a, a difference in the amount of um, I want to say, I want to say, like care that uh, some teachers took in their in their students. There was there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of kids that were that you know didn't show any ambition. Like if you didn't if you didn't show any ambition, like there there was no way these teachers were gonna were gonna pull you through and, and try and try and help you get out like, or. or improve your situation and improve your education like you really had to show that 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 you were about it and that you were serious uh whereas, whereas McNaughton like everyone was like catered to and uh I I found myself at like traditionally I was I was always really well like, really well off at uh, at math and then when I I noticed at Mountain High uh you know I just started hanging out with you know the uh, the potheads behind zeros and stuff like that and you know just hanging out with you know there's some cd characters and you know feeling feeling my 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 academic strategy sort of ch- shifted when i went to mcdonald it was uh you know like get as high as you grade as you can first half of the semester and then just just coast the rest of the way and uh i i found like uh, teachers would see me do that and they wouldn't care. Like they'd just be like, okay, like this kid knows what he's doing, he, and he knows that he's that he's just coasting, right? Whereas McNaughton, like teachers would pull you aside, and they'd be like, yo, what's going on? Like, you know, really, really invested in your in your in your education, which I which I didn't find that at uh, at McNaughton or at Mountain High. I was actually pulled out, so I was out, out out of class first day of school. Uh, at my first day of Mountain High, first period, um, Chris West, beauty guy, um, pulled me out and was like, you know, like you got a reputation. And I was like, oh, really? Like, uh, for what? And he's like, well, what'd you do last year? Well, I was like, oh, I was on student council. And he's like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I was like, oh, okay, well, I was, uh, I was on the football team. He goes, no, that's not it either. I was like, oh, I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, other than student council and, and play football, all I really did was smoke a lot of weed. And, and I was like, oh, shit, okay, I see. <laughs> so he kind of just hit me with, uh, you know, like if you're if you're caught smoking weed, selling weed, being around anyone who is has anything to do with weed, we're gonna we're gonna kick you out of the school. And like that was that was day one, and I was like, oh, cool, okay, well, you know. I'll be, I'll be straight up with you. Like after school, I, I, I am, I am smoking. Like, and I just had to have that conversation with, uh, with the vice principal the first day right away. And once we got that out of the way, the rest was pretty, was pretty chill for the most part. Moncton high. Yeah. <laughs> Chris West, by the way, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bashing on Chris, but he is, he is actually a great guy. Like, yeah. I, I got to know Chris West over, over, over the years and, He's uh, he, he was a cool cat. He always had my back, uh, you know, and he was just doing his job. But uh, I thought I thought that was strange. It was a strange first day of school for me. They were just. <laughs> I can imagine, and I would like. Part of me really wants to know if they approached all of the kids with a potential um, pension for me that way, or just the the black one. Um, but I fascinating for me as someone who went to like. Trimble and saw both high schools in a in a specific light that like what you're saying definitely does completely stack up. Um, but I'm now I'll segue to the the reason we're having you on the activism. Um, so how do you how do you go from getting pulled aside for first day of that time in school for smoking weed to caring about activism and working 
it like within your community. And I guess my, my second question too, is just like, uh, I guess about like your, if your dad had a big influence in that, cause from our like private conversations, it definitely sounded like that, uh, that it was something he was interested in that maybe he instilled in you. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely instilled the, 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 the passion, the, the, the need to, or the, the want to care. You know, whereas I, I felt like before, before I felt really like separated from the, from the causes and, and everything that was going on. I was like, well, you know what? Yeah, sure. Every now and again, like some, some racist thing happens to me or, or prejudice happens, uh, you know, but it, it, for me personally, they were just so few and far between that I, I really wasn't, um, identifying with a lot of the a lot of the struggle that a lot of uh, other people in my situation have faced so for me uh getting into activism was sort of just like you know showing proving to myself and, and, and saying to myself say okay like you know what this this stuff is happening out here and you do have a voice and you can you can do something about it or you know you can do something to better someone else's life yeah, okay maybe my my experiences aren't aren't incredibly rough or or tragic by but you know like i i definitely don't have like the worst horror racist stories but uh you know, I, I still still chose to do something. And it, it was, you know, it was my dad that really, that really instilled that in me and, and got me thinking that way. And in, in, in that sort of mindset of, you know, like, I, I, I can use my voice and I can, and I can make a difference just by just by doing that. And for me, that 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 created a lot of self validation. Uh for just for, for my blackness and, and, you know, like, and what I was able to do for my community. And, and once, once that, once that happened, you know, once I did it once, I was like, yeah, hey, that was, that was pretty cool. It feels good. It feels great. People, a lot of people got the message and uh, yeah. And it, and it was just like, what's, what's the next project? I don't know if that answers your question, Ned. No, it does. It does. It does. Um, but I don't. I mean, we. I think we touched on this earlier. Maybe we didn't. But for the listeners, uh, so you you did help organize Moncton's Black Lives Matter march. Um, how did you specifically help to organize that? Like, and like, what happened with that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, the the march was pretty straightforward. Uh, we. So what my, my role in the, uh, in the March was just like, uh, helping set up the, the Facebook group, sharing it, talking about it, uh, just, just making noise about it. Uh, we did, we did two marches. We yep. did one a week before the big, uh, George, uh, George one. And then there was a, uh, so that that one was just a small one. We just did like a little uh, a little rally through uh, uh, Victoria Park there. Victoria Park down to Main Street. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was just a short little jaunt, and then um, once we once we did that, we were like, oh man, like people are people are responding really well to this. So we said, you know what, let's do let's do another one the next week, and let's just make it bigger and do a longer merge. Excuse me. So uh, we, that's what we did. We just we made the Facebook page, said this is what we're going to do, called up the uh, the mayor, the couple a couple of MLAs, um, told the police about it because it's just what you got to do when you're organizing huge protests. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and then I and then I just I, I led the rally and sort of uh, emceed it. Uh, which was fine by me. I was, I, I wrote a speech, but I was, I was so freaking nervous, man. <laughs> and uh, luckily there is just, there is just so, there's such a wealth of, of great speakers that were there that I was like, Oh man, I could not say anything. today. 
and uh, I yeah, so I kind of I kind of got away with not uh, not doing my speech, but I uh, I emceed it, emceed the whole shebang, and um, yeah, just like led led the the rallies and the cheers while we were doing the the march, and then uh, I think a week later I did another one in uh, in Fredericton, a lot smaller. I think uh, there's maybe about seven hundred to eight hundred people at the at the the George uh, Moncton one. Yeah, the Moncton one, and then um, the next week it was Canada Day. Actually, I I threw a protest the day after my birthday. I I, I was a little hungover. I, I won't lie. <laughs> I actually had to. Uh, I I didn't have a ride to Fredericton, so I I cabbed from uh, from Moncton to Fredericton. It was like three hundred bucks. Oh wow! And, uh, yeah, and I showed up, led the protest. Uh, I think we were about like. 40 to 50 people which is cool like and it, i was like i was like you know what? that's pretty awesome for canada day like you took time out of your out of your holiday to, to do this like I was, I was super stoked we went to uh, a bunch of us went to to grim ross for a beer afterwards i got to meet some really awesome people chit chatted with uh with some of the the community leaders in uh in fredericton and yeah and then and since then uh I haven't done a, a whole lot of uh, like protests. Uh, yeah. That that hasn't. I don't know. I, I, but there at the time, it it, it was just there was just such a spark, and the the stage was really set for for that movement, and and, and it was it, you know like protests were happening all over the country, all over all over the world, really. And, um, you know, pe- people just caught on really quickly. And I think there is, there is definitely something in the, uh, in the air back then. That's, that's awesome. It's really awesome that you were a part of that. Uh, and I hope through the work that you did, you know, it's hard to know how far you move the bar when you do things like this. But uh, I think you definitely helped to open people's eyes and help to educate them and make them more aware and sensitive to the realities of what black people face, whether it's not you yourself, but things that you know um, black people face, um, whether it be in Moncton or Halifax or Toronto or Montreal or anywhere in the States or in other countries as well. Just um, opening people's hearts and minds and eyes to the struggles it, it can, that can be involved with being a person of color. Um, the protests are definitely like, you know, the first phase. And then after the dust settles, there's, there's, there's work that needs to be done to actually change things, change systems, change people's minds permanently and stuff like that. So that is all amazing. And it's great that we got to ask you about that. Um, aside from that, uh, since graduating, you've also had a, a business with your dad. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about life since then and, and what, what what that is and what you're doing there yeah yeah sure so uh um, yeah me and my dad uh we, the first company we started was uh was co-trading uh we were we were buying used cars uh just all over atlanta canada and then shipping them over to nigeria and uh and benin and togo so just like western parts of africa um we did that for yeah we did that for a number of years uh, maybe two years, and then we started switching over into sort of imports. We were bringing in a lot of uh, a lot of moringa, which is uh, yeah, it's a, it's a superfood. We were bringing it here, and uh, we were selling it here. Um, we we've tried a lot of different uh, a lot of different products over over the course of years. Uh, I remember so. So the co-watch started, JT started in 2013. So did the cars for about two years. So that brings us to 2015. We're doing Moringa as well too. And then we really got into, we really got into like uh, eco-friendly builds. So uh, just looking at researching different ways to um, build houses and, and, and structures and uh, one of the one of the, the methods that would that really uh, grabbed our attention and interest was the the earth bag method, where you you like uh, you tamp down 
um, sacks of earth mixed with like uh, straw and, and, and bits of clay and lime and you tamp them down and you, for, you form these bricks. I actually ended up going to, I went to Maui in 2018 for a building course. It was, um, it wasn't, it wasn't the earth bag. It was a different method. They used, uh, they, they essentially used soap to make bubbles and they blew air bubbles into, um, into concrete, which, uh, made the concrete lighter and you could use less for the for the same amount of structure that you were trying to build. Um, I didn't fall in love with that because it was still using a lot of a lot of uh, Portland cement, which is not the greatest for the environment. Um, but then I ended up going to Mexico and I met this guy. It was super sketchy how I met him too. I think I just met him on some some forum uh so like like some real like real hippie form and uh we just got to chat and which which was really awesome in the end like because it, it turned out to be a really beautiful experience uh we, we we just started exchanging emails and he was like you know what dude like i got a i got a farm in in mexico in like in baja he said, if you want you can come down here and work, help work on my house and i'll show you how it's done and i was like he said, yeah, 50 bucks a night. You can camp out on my, on my plot. <laughs> so I was like, dude, that's such a great deal. I'm going to do that for three weeks. <laughs> so I, I flew down, uh, flew down to Mexico. He brought me into, uh, into, it, it was like the village, man. Like it was the roughest part of Mexico you've ever seen. Like I, this is not what they show on sandals vacations, like <laughs> selloffvacations.com. Like that's none of this stuff is on here. Uh, they, they had the, they had the cows strung up. Like uh, it was, it, it was, it was a really different culture. Uh, but it was awesome. I got to I got to learn I got to learn the techniques of, of the building method, and uh, so we we I helped build uh, this guy's house. His name is he goes by Rashik Laquan, and I remember hearing that name, and I was like, that is not your given name, sir. <laughs> but uh, Rashik is uh, he's an awesome dude. He taught me a lot. Um, and so what we wanted to do is we we, we take that take that uh, take that training and, and bring it back we had we had pitched um we had pitched a a, a government in nigeria a local government um a, 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 an affordable housing uh solution which um you know essentially we said you know we'd go down and, and and build like 10 or 20 of these houses and see how people see how people lived in them see how people would do it the the government ended up changing they ended up changing uh, government leadership so the project never went through in the end but uh there was uh there was a whole experience and and i got to meet uh, a lot of cool people um doing uh, just doing stuff like that learning how to learning about these different builds learning about uh, off-grid living and stuff like that so that that was a whole section of my life which probably lasted about I want to say a year, a year and a half uh, from 2018 to roughly 2019, maybe, maybe uh, midway through. And then, of course, you know, 2020 is just like, bleh. Did you do that while at that? <laughs> like, when did you study? Like, during the, the Moringa phase? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I okay. went to Cal. Yeah, I went to Dal and uh, it was really, I started in 2000. 14 or 15 okay yeah okay i mean that is why i started by saying that like you've done a lot of things and i did definitely did not know all of them from just like drinking downtown um and so i was really excited to hear all of this <laughs> like this little story when i went during the day because <laughs> it's like wait what because it's funny when you think you know yeah. someone and they have this whole they have this whole other life oh um, other side yeah yeah did I, did, I ever, did I ever tell you about the, about the dogs in Mexico? No. <laughs> no. Uh, so Rashik was. Uh, he said, uh, "Yo, do you want to go? You want to go up to the canyons?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, sure. I'd love to. I, I'm, I'm a big I'm a big nature geek. I love love camping. I love hiking. I love doing all that stuff." 
And uh, so I was like, yeah, man, I'd love to go up to the can. I'd love to go up to the can. He goes, how's your rock climbing? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty like decent. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've done, you know, like, I've been to Gordon Falls a few times. Like, I'm like, yeah, sure. I guess that kind of guy. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like playing it off too. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. You know, slightly above average. You know? <laughs> and uh, so he's like, all right, well, we're going to, we're going to bite to the canyons. <coughs> it's uh, it's like a three kilometer bite. So nothing, <coughs> nothing crazy. And then he hands me this big stick, this big long stick. And he's like, hang on to that. You're going to need that. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. That's weird. I didn't really, I didn't ask much questions. I was like, yeah, you know what? This whole thing has been weird. I, I'm just, I'm going to roll with it. And we're, we're biking through this little village, uh, this little farm village. And I swear to God, every stray dog in that village started beeline it right towards us. And the dogs are like clipping at your heels and like, they're like trying to bite you. Right. So I, and I see Rashid, he's got his stick and he's just like whacking the dogs. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> and so I got my <laughs> stick and I'm just, I'm like whipping the dogs, you know? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. All right, we're good. We're good. I see. Yeah. Keep the stick nearby. <laughs> you lived a lot of, a lot of life. You've lived a lot of life. That's insane. Like activism, but also if I need to rock climb, I will for, <laughs> yeah, for chance yeah. whip a dog with a stick. Yeah. And you know it's funny was when we got to the canyon and we got to the rock climbing bit, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh yeah, like if if I screw up here, like we are we are four hours away from the nearest hospital. There's no way you're you're walking out. But uh, it was cool. We, we went up in the canyons. Uh, there, were, there were some little pools that we get to. We just got to hang out and chill out and talk and just enjoy Mexico. Wow. Very <laughs> what a cool. What a funny little story. I'm glad that you made it out um, so that you could be on our podcast and that you weren't endangered or hurt. That's a, that's a crazy story. Um, Segwaying to a much less crazy story, but a story that mm. I very much want to hear about is this market um, that you you decided to do that you said when I went, I think last month, you had, had ju like just started the week before, if I'm not mistaken. So tell us how you started um, doing that and how people can go and, and everything about this uh, multicultural market. Yeah, sure. So uh, the, the market itself, uh, we... we, we we just we when we when we get an idea we we kind of just go in and just start doing it and hope that everything falls into place afterwards. Uh, that sort of didn't work out too well initially. So we're 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 doing a lot of uh, we're rebranding it. So at, at first it was it was the it started off as the Afro Asian Afro Asian market. Uh, I chose to switch it up to uh, it's not going to be called the the metro market. So the the origin of, of the the name metro market, uh, you know, metro is short for metropolitan, which is you know like a, a lot of um, it generally in a metropolitan you have a lot of different cultures coming together. Uh, so that that was kind of the inspiration for the name, and then so this way it was a lot more inclusive. It, it wasn't just it wasn't just African or Asian, you know, you could, there's a lot of Haitians here. There's, there's Jamaicans, there's all sorts of different cultures here in, in, in New Brunswick and in, in Moncton specifically as well too. So, and, uh, and we're going to be changing the, uh, the date. So we're going to be doing it once a month. It's going to be the last Saturday of every month and it's going to be held at the Moncton Lions Community Center. Um, and follow-up questions, types of vendors that'll be there, like, or is it like food and buying stuff? And then uh, just to be yeah. clear, does that mean that like at the end of the last Saturday of this month, there'll be one or because of the rebrand, is it going to be starting like end of August? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, it, it will be happening uh, the last Saturday of this month. Cool. Um, in terms of, in terms of the types of vendors, there's, um, there's going to be the, the beef food vendors. There's, there's arts and crafts. There's, there's um, fashion. 
Um, and, and we're not we're not really uh, saying no to a lot of a lot of vendors. Uh, if, if the if you got something or or okay, even if if you wanted to promote their businesses and stuff like that, and just and just have uh, you know black owned businesses and, and or you know not just not even just black owned at at, the, at this point it, it's just about about multiculturalism and, and 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 just getting getting people exposed to the different cultures that are in their community um and and just to provide a a stage for anyone who who fits that criteria and want and wants to you know expose like expose their culture to to the community that they're in vice versa well, when you have, um, if you have like graphics or social media or stuff, make sure to send it our way and we'll make sure to promote before the last Saturday. And maybe if Clinton has time, he can schlep some of his fam yeah. jam over and check it out. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'll be, I'll be doing on that. The scene. I'm doing all that stuff this week. It's a uh, bit busy, busy, busy. Um, but, but it's fun. And, and, and it's the, and it, it's, it's rewarding too. Like when you're, when you're, you're doing stuff that uh, that you feel has uh, has a that's something bigger than yourself. It's uh, it, it it's it's just really really cool to to see where it works, see where it starts, see where it ends up. You know that, and like I guess I, I guess I'm just like chasing that feeling again that I got back in in 2018 uh, with, with that protest or or is it 2019? I, I forget the year. 2020 yeah okay that makes sense <laughs> um because because there, there is there's there's no better feeling than than doing something that that you feel is is not only good for yourself but it's good for your community and good for your people and and it, it leaves you with just such a, a feeling of, of, of gratification and, and, and satisfaction. Uh, it, it, it's it's almost euphoric in a sense. I remember being just so elated after after the protest, after everything was all said and done, and being like, "Damn, we did some good work today." <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I guess I've just been chasing that sort of that feeling since. You chasing that feeling, bro. That, that's a that's a good feeling worth chasing. There's mm-hmm. many things people chase in this world, and uh, you know, if you're chasing the feeling you get from doing good deeds and making change, you're on the right track. <laughs> we we know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, and, you, yeah. you guys are doing great too. I, I when when Hillary was telling me all about what you guys are doing, I was like, whoa, all this is happening. Hey, right on. We're trying. We're trying. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely bring our family out to uh, to check out the multicultural market. Yeah, awesome, man. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Love to have you. Maybe, <laughs> maybe get some uh, some Jamaican snacks or anything. You want to cook up some jerk chicken or something? Like <laughs> <laughs> you could talk to Spicy Girls in Riverview about that. You know, Spicy Girls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. They right, could probably yeah. hook you up with that. Yeah. yeah I can, I can yeah. make a couple of Jamaican dishes, but... Uh, Cool, cool. Ones to go to, I think. Spicy girls. I, I'm writing it down. I, I'm saying Clinton sent me. <laughs> we, we we can definitely connect you. I need to I need to talk to them as well. So I'll I'll, I'll send them your information. Uh, um, cool. So I think I think the last question we really have, or the last thing that I wanted to ask about, was like I I guess my my mild amount of jealousy comes from the fact that like it sounds like you have such a, a wonderful bond with your dad, and like you really seem to instill in you um like the importance of like owning your black roots and like being like unabashedly yourself and who you are and your identity um but also through all this activism work and then also partnering up together and just like working together on all those other endeavors sounds like a lot of fun um and I'm just curious if you knew at all like what what got your dad to be so passionate or such a big activist like was it ever something that like in the move from Nigeria to here did he see like such a difference that he felt empowered by that or wanted to make changes or has he just like always been like that type of guy <laughs> around you? You know, I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't talked to my dad too much about like, you know, where, where he draws his, is his inspiration from, but, um, um, growing up, you know, like I, I can only imagine, you know, like for, you know, me, me being the only 
me and my family being the only black kid in a, in a black family in in a community in an area of town I can't imagine what that was like for him like like but like, like you know for me like that would that was that was the only thing I knew like I didn't I, I wasn't I wasn't taken out of I didn't leave a different culture I, I grew up in Atlanta Canada you know like that was this has been my experience whereas like my dad left and it left an entire continent and, and his home to to come here and so for him I think he was a lot of what he was doing was was trying to bring some of that that home back you know like we were we our, our house was like the proverbial stomping ground for for black families in 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 Moncton like like when I was like five years old every Sunday we would have big old barbecues and like our our spot was like our house was like the hangout like everyone everyone would hang out and to chill like the, the community just came over and, and hung out at our house and it, I I those those memories will always just be solidified in my in my brain and uh you know, for him, he, he, I think it was just important for him to just never, never forget that and never, never lose sight of, 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 of home and, and, and what it meant to, to grow up and, and, and be surrounded like by people that look like you and, and share your values and your culture. And, and I think he just, just wanted to preserve that and like show it to us, like uh, to his kids. And, and I, he did a good job. He, uh, and, it, and it didn't stop after, you know, after, after when my, cause my, my, my parents split up when, uh, when I was younger, they, uh, you know, my, my dad never stopped. Like even, even if it, even if the kids weren't around, like when, when he was doing his, when he was doing his undergrad at, uh, at Dow, he was very, very involved in the, in the black, uh, student body. Same thing when he was doing, uh, yeah, uh, when he was doing his bachelor's in in uh, in Fredericton, uh, he's just always always been part of the community. He's a social worker by profession, so I think he's 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 always had a had a soft spot for for community outreach and and, and especially growing up in in the church as well too. So I, I think that's always just been a part of his 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 aura and his 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 DNA as a, as a person. And it's just, it's just been passed down. Well, I'm glad the Moncton gets to benefit because it was passed down. And I'm really excited about the, the market that you're doing. I think it's going to be great. Me yeah, too. That, it, it is very exciting. That's really cool. You're, you're a really interesting individual. And uh, it was great to have you on the show. Um, keep us up to date with anything you're doing. Always make sure to send us content uh, of stuff that you're doing. We'll always share it on our channels, um, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, yeah, I was surprised that I'd never come across from you, uh, come across you in my life because I've been here for 13 years. But then, uh, yeah, Hillary, your your going out days were a bit different than mine. I, I realize now. But yeah, it's this has been a really interesting episode. You've had a you've had a really interesting life. Uh, we look forward to seeing what you do. Yeah. What were you going to say, Hillary? I was going to say that we all just did like different shifts at the bar. You were you were a little bit ahead of our time. And then I left. And then now when I come visit, everyone gets to come out and just be like, hey. Mm. <laughs> That's all I was really <laughs> going to say. Um, no, Olin, thank you so much. So yeah, when, you, when you've got those socials, we will, we will 100% share them. Um, if ever anyone wanted to connect with you, though, how would they find you or would you plan on making the socials for the market if you don't want people to connect with you in your personal endeavors? Uh, yeah, sure. So I, I, I've been running everything through, uh, through I, I am going to switch it up too because the, the email is, is just quite lengthy and I'm like, you know, I just want something short, sweet and simple for people to remember. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's all getting done this week. So Perfect. Um, for, for now, I really don't mind. Uh, you, you can reach out to me on, on Facebook or or Instagram, the the, the usual stuff. Oh, well, I guess it's, it might not be usual for older generation. I, it's so weird <laughs> how like that's like I I've I've got friends <laughs> that I've known for like seven plus years, and I don't have their numbers. Like I just I just message them on Facebook. And I'm like yo yo. 
<laughs> Instagram went down this week and I <laughs> was in the process of having eight conversations with people who do not have my phone number and I was lost because that's my career and I was just standing staring at my phone like I don't <laughs> what do I do now they have a chokehold on us youths yeah. Happy. Yeah, I will say to yeah. anyone, no matter no matter what your age, anyone listening, like, yeah, last year Facebook went out for like a whole day, or two days. Like, you gotta have your friends' phone numbers. You gotta have people's like, <laughs> talk <laughs> to them the on Messenger, no problem. Yours. But get their phone number at some point because Facebook's a company and it owns yeah. Instagram. And if they ever go down, like, you may never speak to certain people again for the rest of your life. <laughs> that, how crazy would that be? Right? Like, and, that's and, the and, reality. It's just yeah, a company, and, it's, right? and, it, and it's not. It's not. It's right there. Yeah, we're living that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Olam, Clinton Davis, Propberry. Like, follow, subscribe on all of our platforms: TikTok, YouTube. Why did I almost say LinkedIn, <laughs> Facebook, Maybe Twitter, LinkedIn. Instagram, um, GoFundMe. We continue to get donations, which is super, super exciting. Um, so also continue to give us money, please. <laughs> Thanks. Is that everything? And if you want to write or contribute oh, yeah. to uh, Black Atlantic directly by creating video content, your own blogs, your own short videos or anything, uh, we now are starting to have the funds to pay contributors. So reach out to us. Crazy. Anyway, that's it. Peace. Awesome. Thanks so much Peace. for having me, guys. Thank you, Ola. It was a great interview. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure.